It has been roughly six weeks since the last time I slept for longer than four hours in one go. What can I say? Life happens, right? Today we're going to be exploring how we can use Photoshop's Firefly AI to create super good content aware feel for your videos. And if you stick around to the end, I'm also going to show you how you can actually use this to also modify 16 by 9 footage to fit social media 9 by 16 footage. And if you've ever done that, you know, it's sometimes a pain in the ass when you have those really good shots. But with this tool, you can make the frames look equally good also in 9x16. Now the first caveat is that you can actually use this mainly for static footage. If you have a fixed camera that's, that has some handheld shake, you're still good to go. But if you have a lot of movement, you move the camera forward, it's going to be really difficult to do. Some panning you might be able to pull off, but I would mainly recommend using this for handheld footage that's from a fixed point and you're not moving the camera basically at all. Or even, you know, tripod if you're into those kind of things. All right, here we have the project lined up here from here. As you can tell, we have this restaurant we shot at and one an exterior shot, but because there's street parking, these guys are actually parked illegally, but since there's street parking, people do whatever they want. And uh, so we gotta get rid of those cars. So the first thing you do is you use dynamic link to replace with artifacts composition. And here we have the footage. And as you can tell right away, since we had the other timeline with a lot applied, this is now in log. So first thing I would do is fix that to get it back to, uh, to standard rec 709. So I'm gonna just add a lot to a adjustment layer as you normally would. So this is the footage, as you can tell, there's some shaking in it. So uh, I would recommend actually doing it for the first frame. If there's something moving across the frame that makes you want to actually do it to another frame than the first frame, I recommend marking that frame because you're gonna need to know exactly where you uh, created your fill layer. But for this, we're just gonna make it simple. We're just gonna do the first frame. So then you do save frame as, and then you do file, and then make sure it's a PSD file. So now we have Photoshop open. We're just gonna mask out the cars right here, just roughly right like this, and then generative fill. So we're gonna start writing, just test whatever works best. We're gonna just gonna write remove and see what happens. <laughs> and as you can tell, like, I don't know what it looked like behind those cars, but it very well it might have looked like this. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Also, I'm just gonna quickly remove this sign because it's, it's not a nice sign. Perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do now, I usually hide this layer. So now we have this, this is the things we've actually masked out. So what I do is I export this as a PNG. You can also do Photoshop, uh, but PNG I found there's very little difference in color between PNG and Photoshop. And it's just a way smaller file if you use a PNG. And then you just grab your PNG, uh, you drop it into After Effects, and then here we go. And now we drop it on here. But since this is now a handheld clip, we're actually gonna have to uh, do some tracking right here. So. From the frame we start at, we double click the video. This is quite a large frame, it's shot in 6K, so we're gonna do uh, track motion. Uh, we're gonna find a place with a lot of contrast and that's looking quite unique and there's not a lot of similar places. Preferably also close to the point where you actually have removed objects. So I'm just gonna actually go, go with this rim right there. I think that's gonna be quite well and the smaller these are the faster this process is gonna go so we're gonna do this maybe we'll just do both rims all right let's see what happens so we'll put it in center there sort of yeah there's not a lot of movement so i don't think this box is gonna have to be that big so the smaller box is the thing you're tracking and the bigger box is within which area you are tracking that box and now we'll just do play right here all right, that's looking good. So um, now we need an object. I always forget to create these null objects. Let's go back into the composition. Layer, new, null object. Now we have our null. We're gonna go back into the layer tab right here, whatever it's called, and then go back into this tracker. We're gonna set the target to the null object, uh, right, like so, and then we're just gonna hit apply. Both dimensions, of course, and now we have this null object, and now at the frame you either have marked or the first frame. You just simply do the pick whip with, from your PNG to the null object, like so. And then you simply play the video. And 
that's so easy. As you can tell, this is a bit soft if you compare it to the background, so you might want to do some sharpen. Uh, just to kind of make it match a little bit better. Yeah, maybe like that. And yeah, that's it. That's basically what you do. Uh, if you want to be really picky, we still have some reflections of this car, but I mean, who's really going to see that for the two seconds it's on the frame? All right, so voila, that's how you do it. And for the second thing I just promised to show you guys, we're going to hop into this other project real quick. This is a problem we ran into the a few months ago where we had this really, really sick intro shot it works really well as you tell it in 16 by 9 but if you go over to 9 by 16 whatever you decide to do like crop it yeah that's that's not good and since this is the intro shot you don't want to add like a blur back here which you i've seen some people doing so what can we do from what we just learned to actually add this to a 9 by 16 composition well generative fill all right let's see how we do this this is actually not that different from what we just did Let's do like this. We're going to do the same thing. Export as Photoshop. All right. And then we open it up in Photoshop. I would actually move these masks over a few frames just so you have a little bit easier time or that you can do some masking if needed uh, to basically smooth it out because sometimes you get a bit of color shift. And when you gener do generative fill and just let Photoshop do its thing. All right, and this too, I mean, I don't remember what it looked like. I think in the other version we had a sun up here, which was quite nice, so... But I don't know, this... This looks quite good too. I think this is quite clean. Since we're doing it like this, when you move a camera, there might be some wobble, and the top part might move a little bit different than the bottom part. So in After Effects, sometimes to get these guys matching, you might have to do some masking and track them separately. Uh, this is also if you have a lot of objects in the frame, like in different parts of the frames, you might actually have to do that too. Let's just export this, drop this one back into After Effects, drop this one here. We're just gonna add a lot to this too. And as you can tell, this is maybe not super well graded right now. And uh, yeah, I don't think we have a lot of color shift actually at all to worry about here. So that's great. Perfect. And uh, same thing right here, because the frame is moving, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to track that. We'll do track motion. We'll do this pole right here, which is on one part of the frame, and then we'll do far out in the arch. All right, let's see if this is gonna work in our favor. Yeah, this is actually looking good. Once again, I forgot to add a null object, so we'll do it right now. We'll edit this target, add it to the null object, hit apply, X and Y dimensions, and then we'll just pick with this to the null object. As you can tell, there's some funkiness right here because of the fact that I think this actually might be zooming in a bit. So back into this tracker, hit scale, I don't know if we have to track it again, but let's do it just to be safe. Target is still 06. Hit apply. That's looking quite good actually. There's there's the tiniest bit of movement. If you would do it really, really well, you would mask this and do these guys separately. So you would track close to the bottom and you do another one as far up as you can. Maybe this pole and this arch off the top of it. Just for this tutorial, let's not spend any more time on it. How do you like it? Is this something you would use? I mean, I've used it a ton because it's just so good. These kind of things were not possible for us. We didn't have the budgets to work with for like VFX artists to create these kind of things. And now, yeah, we can just do it with AI. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Get subscribed if you like this and would like to see more of it. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Have a good one.